It's Terry's Tales on Tuesday again, and we're just picking up where he's done loads of gigs. He were out to work for 48 hours, so that... <laughs> and that's about it, I think, in my yeah, career. <laughs> um, so he's gigging at the Dial House in Sheffield regular, um, but he's, he's decided to take up some teaching during the day. So what year are we at here? We're, we're talking around about 1984. Right. Something like that. Yeah. 84. So I decided that it's time to start teaching because I got qualifications to do it. I, you know, I got my own grades and everything else. I thought, right, I'm going to start doing this. So I thought I'll start teaching organ first. Yeah. Right. Which I got because a lot of people here yeah, we were popular at the time. A lot of people were buying the image for organ for home. Yeah. A lot of them coming to Foxwood in, in town. I didn't you know anybody that can give me lessons. All right. You see, so I said, well, put my name down. So. After about a week or so, I got quite a few people, asked, you know, coming from Poplars, can you do this, can you do this, no. I used to find myself travelling out as far as Emsworth, giving up organ lessons to people out there. Right. You know, and all over the place, Penniston and, you know, all in the area. Yeah. Which was great, I used to enjoy it, and I come, some of my students became really good players. Absolutely. Inclu including one from Wall Green. Called Mr. Kevin Grunnell. Kevin Grunnell. Who later played the organ at the Paramount Cinema still in he Peniston. Still he still plays there. And then he inaugurated his place at Bark Green called the Astoria Centre. The Astoria Centre, you must look that up yeah. in Bark Green. You'll never find it in a million years. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to get the secret how to get there. Go towards Bark Green, towards the crossroads, before you get to the Little India. On your right hand side, there's a place that sells sheds and so like that. Right. Turn into there and go right down to the bottom, and you'll see this industrial unit. Yeah. And you think, hmm. it says on it, bars the optical, stuff like that. So you go into this place, and you know, the piles of compost and one thing and learn, walk down to bar the hospice, that's not hospice, optical. Right. And on your left hand side, there's a door. So, and you go through it, and there's a little cafe. You know, bubble, tea, little tea, cakes, and everything. Then you go through the other double doors, and there is like a miniature Blackpool Tower with the dance floor, all the chairs and tables around. Yeah. And there, up on the up on the Joss Rostrum, there's two organs there's the, there's the Compton organ, theatre organ, and a Wurlitzer. Organ. And all behind it is the pipes and everything that go with it. This one and that it was inaugurated by Kevin Grunner. Wow. And that's what he does now. So if yeah. anybody wants to get down there for a tea dance on a Wednesday afternoon, yeah. one o'clock well four, there you go. Yeah, we'll put a link to the Historian Centre under yeah, this we'll video. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Well that's Kevin, that's one of my students as well. Then we have to get all the other students come, a little girl called Catherine Ollerton came to see me once. But, uh, once? Uh, when her mother, her mother actually spoke to me about it because she wanted to move, move her on up, up a bit further in, in, the, in the grades. So mm. I said, okay. And this little charming lady here, Catherine Rannis now, yes. came and I took her up to grade eight. Yes. Which got took her into eight. Leeds College of Music. Yes. And what she learnt from there and what she learnt from me and other things. Now she's playing with big bands. Mm -hmm. Yes. She's doing her own little scene, the delightful area, delightful music. Delightful, yeah. Delightful, sorry. Yes. Delightful. And, and the big band are playing with Kevin Grinnell this year at, at the Penniston Parallel. At Penniston Parallel. Yes. Yeah, that's strange. So yes. you'll be playing piano for the. So there'll be two of my yes. students there. there one will. playing organ and you'll come. You must come, I'll let you know. I'll have know. to crack at that. Yeah. There was another young lady as well who uh, I, I taught called. Uh, from Hannah Peel. Hannah Peel. I taught Hannah. I uh, met her mother when I was working in schools as well. I did teaching in schools, you know, parapathetic teaching in schools. I worked at sort of Burton Road. And Gina Peel, we called her, that's her mother. And she yeah. asked me if I teach her daughter. And I taught Hannah. Yeah. Now, Hannah is also making a big name for herself. She absolutely is. She yeah. is. Not half in London. She's got her own gear, her own studio around there. I saw her on Channel 4. A couple of weeks ago, playing for Paul Weller. Yeah. The, the, the group, and but now he's got an orchestra behind him, 
conducted by a stunning redhead, and that's Anna Peel. Yeah. And she did all the arrangement for it as well. Yeah. Which was yeah. clever, clever girl. Yeah. So lots of people like that have come. Ian Marsh. Yes. I taught Ian. Yeah. Who is now a teacher as well. He's, he's still gigging, he's still teaching. Teaching, yeah. great guitarist, but now he plays, he can all play keyboard it. and all yeah. that. Yeah. And all around. So lots of people have come through my hands, right? And still doing it. Yeah. You know, although now I am officially retired from teaching. I can't believe it. Well, no, I'm, 80, I'm 84 this year, Catherine. No, I don't feel Another like. 20 years teaching in you. I know, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, it, but I'm still involved in music. Yes. Say, for one of my former students, I've just written a wedding anthem for the walk down, when she walks down in uh, the Holyrood Church. But incidentally, the organist at Holyrood Church is Catherine Cath Philbin. Yes. Who I taught Catherine Philbin up to Bailey. Yes, yeah. So they're like falling out of... Lord yeah, right. we'll not give away her age, but it's never too late, you know. No. Catherine's got her grade eight recently. Just recently, like yes. Last year, she, yes, yeah. I had, yeah, I had last year, I had four pass at grade eight. Fantastic. Four, which is a good record, isn't it, really? It, it is, yeah. Because yeah. grade eight's a toughie. Yeah, they don't give it away either. They certainly don't, and it's getting tougher. Yeah. So, you know, this is where we are, but like I say, I, I knew... Pardon? Oh yeah. Uh, this is Plenty another. Of. This is another lady I was associated with when I were at, at, at the uh, Great Yarmouth Wellington Pier. All right. They they had a, a team of ten dancers called the Lex Grey Dancers on there, and one one we were on. I were on with Ronnie Dukes McKinley, right? And then one of the dancers came to me one day. She says, Terry. She says. Do you think I'm anything like a decent singer? So I said, uh, call her Janie, Janie D. I said, oh no, Janie, come down to the theatre tomorrow, I'll run you through some stuff on the piano. So she did do, and they got in there, came, she came down, and I looked at her and said, hey, you've got a good voice, Janie, nice voice. And uh, I said, what you want to do, I mean, during the season, which were 14 weeks, I went down several times, we ran through various stuff there. I said, at the end of the season, I said, what you want to do, you want to uh, get yourself a good singing teacher. And uh, he's a great dancer, just take it from there. So she said, I oh, will. And anyway, I, I, I've got a letter upstairs, I can show you. After about six weeks, she wrote me a letter and she said she got a job in an office working for the typist and she was thinking about Packing the business in, but she managed to get a singing teacher to, and she was enjoying singing lessons. So I walked back and I'm always sl slapped a bum. <laughs> I said, Don't be silly, Janie. You've got potential for a lovely dancer. You are a lovely singer. Just keep keep going. And uh, so, didn't hear anything from her for about a year. And all of a sudden, we got a phone call. She said, Are you going to come and see me? It's Janie. I said, Where are you? She said, I'm at Bradford, Alhambra. I thought, oh, she'll be a dancer, you know. I said, who are you with? She said, I'm with Wayne Sleep. In his show called Bits and Pieces. I still, we went, and I still expected her to be dancing. Right. Oh, she was dancing all right. But she was also second top to Wayne Sleep, singing in, in all his production stuff with him and other things she did as well. So she then moved on, stayed there. The next time I saw her, again, was at the Lyceum Theatre in Sheffield. She was in so Showboat, right? She was seeing a second female top to that. The next time I saw her was at the Crucible, where she was singing lead in South Pacific. Wow. Right? Then she went, she did then uh, things in the West End of London. She did Anna in the King and I at the Palladium. She was in Cats as well. Then all of a sudden, one of me and was watching the television one day, watching Midsummer Murders. And who was on there but Janie. Now she's into acting. <laughs> one then, thing leads to another. Yeah, <laughs> then she went into the, Shakespeare, the Globe Shakespeare Theatre in London, doing the Shakespearean acting, which then went on a tour of Russia to great acclaim, came back. 
then the witch, then they went over to the Hollywood Bowl, right? She went over as a tribute to Shakespeare on his 400th birthday in the Hollywood Globe Theatre with the Hollywood Bowl Symphony Orchestra behind her, right? Wow. Then, because of that, she did the play on Broadway for about 12 weeks, but she already knew the play, the assets had written it. Again, great, great reviews. Now, she, I see that she's up for playing in the Follies. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, it's called it's called Follies, and it, it's uh, the National Theatre in London. Right. So that's where she is. That's Janie D. Janie D. I'm proud to see. I'm proud. We went to see her down in London at the Little Vic in the play she was in, not singing. Now she's acting. Wow. So one thing leads to another. It does, doesn't it? Do you remember that? You must remember that. Yes. Can, can yes, you've got to get yourself out there and, and you don't and wear it. And diversify. Yeah. Always diversify. Yeah. Do things. I'm going to have a go at it even if I, don't, I haven't done that before. Yeah. Hmm? Wow. Thanks for that story, Lydia. That were a good inspiration. Lydia, have you got that little thing on the... On the, on the, on the no. Uh, no, at the end of the season in, in, in uh, Great Yarmouth, Jenny, yeah, yeah, bought me a little something as a thank you, and that's, I've kept it all these years. Is it? Yeah, yeah, she was on the, yeah, I'll, I'll just show you. And she bought me this. That's what, nearly 14 years. I just read what it says on it. A kindness is remembered long after it is done. Isn't that the cutest thing? Hmm. That is cute. Oh, nearly 40 years. That's, yeah, it is. Lovely. So, me, yeah, I'm going to take that as well. That's a key thing. No. But that's the, the like things that are associated with yeah. things, you see, like that. Yeah. And you don't realise who you're working with or whatever, but yeah. they become stars yeah. of the day. So, I've worked with a lot, of, lot like that. You know, I've worked with my mother and people like the Greensborough, and people, a guy called Jerry Dorsey, mm -hmm. who is. Yes, that name. He's now called Engelbert Humperdinck. Ah, oh, right. Of course. That was his name. And don't forget the chimpanzee that used to pinch me bum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the elephant, can you? Yes, yes. Previous stories, you've yeah. got to flick back. So, it's all these things that account for your life. It don't is. It? And if, if, you, if you're good to work with, you'll always find people wanting to work with you again. It's, you? it's a bit, I, I now work, I don't work. I go, I go to see my friends. At the, at the Chantry, Chantry Hotel, in which I took this lovely lady. Yes, I went to the Chantry lovely Hotel. Guy, guy. And they actually loved it, thought she was great. They liked her playing and they liked her singing. So, I'm saying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's a place where I go about every other week. And that's where a lot of the old pros go. Yes, when I went, there was Bernie Clifton I met. met. I met Bernie Clifton. Yeah, Bernie, yes. And uh, Bernie, uh, he used to go, Bobby Nutt used to go. Yeah. Uh, sadly, before he died. And Paul Shane used to go from Hardy High. Oh, really? He did, many years ago, he used to go. Uh, Roy, Roland Roy and Jackie Todoff, who owned the Chantry. Yes, well, Jackie was there when I went. Right, but sadly, the, the other one, Roland Roy, he was 93, he died last year. Oh. You know, last year. So he... You know, it was a great year of passing on. I remember playing for Roland Roy before he ever met Jackie. And I think I was something like about 19 or something. Really? Or, or 20, something like that, to come out of the I think. So he, and he was a big star at the time. And he, I think Jackie met him in 1985, and I was playing for him in 1983 or something like that. Yeah. At the Rotherham Trace tra tra Club in Rotherham. Uh -huh. But uh, he was a great singer, and he was like a star. But then they teamed up together. Roland Roy was a champion clog dancer and he'd been, he appeared at the Albert Hall 15 times in the finals and won it all. And uh, he was also a good tap dancer as well. And they teamed up together. And he was, a, he was also a nice singer, Jackie, as well. So the team were great. And they actually worked for 20 years on the Kiwi 2. Oh, wow. On the cruise liners. Yeah. And it became, because it, they became well known for that, and a lot of people got to know them. I mean, in places like the QE2, 
when you're working on the stage, you never know who's watching you. Because a lot of the big star names used to travel across the Atlantic, didn't they, on the cruise ships? Uh, of course. Across the Cuban too, from here. So a lot of American film stars and that used to be on board, didn't they? Oh, wow. And uh, used to meet them all. But one of their people they met many, many times was Ginger Rogers. Oh, now Ginger Rogers became a big fan of theirs. And he saw in the hallway of the Chanty Hotel, yeah. the picture done with her, Virginia. So that's their little story. Now they've been off the road, you know, for many, many years now. You know, Cloudy Roy's died, as I said. Yeah. I think Jackie is now about 85 or 6. Yeah. Uh, so we're all getting up together, aren't we? Yeah. Roy was 93, that's when he died. Oh, it's a good innings, isn't it? Oh, I hope I get a good one. I hope I get as good an yeah. inning as that. Yeah, and is that nice that you all still come together? But you th the thing is about it, when you work together a lot, work with them, you get a, a camaraderie with people, you get fond of people, don't you? Yeah. And they get fond of you. Yeah. I mean, uh, and they know you. So they know if they're going to a club and I'm playing the organ or whatever, they know that they're going to get whatever they want to do, they know they're going to get it. Yeah. Quality. Quality. Yes. To exactly what they want, and that I mean, I have to play for things on the backs of sink packets and all of that, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> just to call them down, don't yeah. you? <laughs> just put the call down, and it's just like absolutely <laughs> yeah. time. And uh, but it, it, yeah, as long as it goes on, because it, you know, not in, in that era, in that era, there were no rehearsing, really. It, no, 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 it was it was music here on. Wow. Many a time I've been past the music. I've never seen the act. I've just been past the music along the back. Because oh, that's the next act on. I don't know what it is until I put the it down. Well, that's kept showing you it kept me, too. It's really kept me <laughs> on. But it does, it does help me to sight read. Oh, yeah. Like that. You've got to, yeah. You can't not do that because otherwise you're stuck. Yeah. You know, you don't stop in the middle of things, do you? No, the show must go on. Definitely. It definitely uh, there was one instance when we were in Greensboro when they had two male singers on. And the, fir in the, the first one, they, so they thought, well, what we'll do, we'll split them up. So we put him on first and we put him on about fourth after two other acts, a comedian and another act gone, you know, so we split them up. So the first act went on, right, and they, 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 the intro, more or less what the, what the, the mambo thing, doom, ding, 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 that kind of intro, and then you see to it, you know. As was the third, the other one that came on fourth, same kind of ding 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 bamboo kind of different song, but different. anyway, what happened? We had the first night, first we had, we had Monday, the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. On the Wednesday, the one that went on first, right? The, he had to go to see his wife in hospital or something, so he couldn't get on while later. So they changed spots with the guy that went on fourth, so he went on first. Right. So he gave me a bit of time to get to the club. Fine. The only trouble is, they never told us, the band. Never tell anybody in the band, see? So we, and they never, we didn't think. So he listened to the intro, the intro behind the curtain, never ever goes, hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah. So he stopped, like, boom, then, and run, then, 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 and this other guy comes in. So now he's on stage, and now he started singing, right? But it's the same it's kind of intro. But he, he forgot to say that it's a, the, the piece that the other guy's singing is about a fourth higher than he's singing. I know. Yeah. So he starts singing it, he's just gradually <laughs> getting higher and higher, and he's getting redder in the face like he can't believe. You know. And he actually, eventually, he did get through it. You know, yes. by then we changed the music around for the next next pieces. Right. He came off after in the interval. He said, "You know, I, said, I didn't think I would make that lad." I thought me. He said, "I thought me. I thought me voice had gone or gone." Oh no. So I told him, "I said that's what happened." He said, "You actually four notes higher than you would think, but you know, when you started before we could change the music around, got to so we just out. followed you yeah. on your music and just kept going." So lots of things like that happen in, when you're working with live, mm -hmm. yeah. in live, you know. Do you prefer live to record? Oh, I do. I still love it. They, so we're going to look at these next week. We'll take you through yeah. all these recordings yeah. that yeah, they have on hundreds of recordings and stuff. produced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But live, live's good. You've got to go live because the adrenaline is up, it's and easy. it's got to be. Yeah. So it's like 
But it's also also to keep uh, control. Yeah. You know, so if if they the lads in the band know there's one in control, it 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 goes that way, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Right. Tune in next week to see um, some of these records that Terry's produced as well mm. as played on. Oh yeah.